Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. Today I want to talk about the status of the QMK Sonics port, as well as show it off on several keyboards, and then tell you how you can install it on your own keyboard if yours is supported. So what is this uh, project all about? Well, in the past several years, there have become a whole bunch of low-cost budget mechanical keyboards available for sale, and most of these are RGB and they use pretty much the exact same chip. So you have boards from Red Dragon, which these are commonly available in the US as, as well as around the world. Um, uh, these are being sold at Micro Center and uh, they're, they're usually under 50 or $60. And they are actual real mechanical keyboards uh, available with, um, I think they're Outemu, O-U-T-E-M-U, switches. Um, they feel pretty good. And this one, the uh, Red Dragon K556, it's made out of metal. It's a really well-built keyboard. And typing on it is great. But what sets these apart from, say, your Logitechs or your Razors or your Corsairs, the more expensive keyboards... The ones that often cost twice, if not three times as much as these. Really, the main thing is software. So these are very limited in what they can do with their default software. Um, they have some built-in RGB modes, um, some rainbows, some patterns, some key reactive ones. But that's pretty much all you can do. You can set them using function combinations. Or you can use the software that comes with them. And the software is very basic. All it lets you do is change through the built-in modes. But it can't do anything fancy. It can't do audio visualizers. It can't do uh, integration with your games. They don't have an SDK. So you can't write RGB functions into your own software. So that's kind of the limitation of these boards. Is The hardware seems to be pretty well built. Um, the cost is great. They feel great to type on, but you can't really get some of the fancy features that you would expect from the more expensive and more gamer-oriented brands like Logitech, Razer, Corsair, uh, among others. So, when I ported these boards, I actually bought this one first. I got this one about a year ago at Micro Center. I saw it on an end cap at Micro Center. I just saw $50 mechanical keyboard sitting there staring me in the face when I was browsing Micro Center and I had never heard of the Red Dragon brand before but I was curious I was like I want to add that to open RGB so I went ahead and bought one uh, this one and I played around with it I reverse engineered the software and I got it fully implemented in open RGB unfortunately it doesn't have what we call a direct mode which is where the software can set all the LEDs on the keyboard at once really quickly with no flicker and no saving to the flash. So everything you do on the software, whenever you change something, it saves it to the internal memory on the keyboard. And that's great if you unplug the keyboard and go plug it in somewhere else, it'll save your settings. The problem is um, we want to send LED updates really fast to create our own custom effects. And we don't want those to be saved because they're only going to be shown for a split second before we send a new one. And these patterns are meant to be animated, so you don't really want them saved. So when you go plug your keyboard in somewhere else, it'll just save one frame of a pattern that was being shown during some game you were playing. You don't want that. So that's what direct mode is. This keyboard, all of these keyboards, because they're all based on the same platform, they do not have direct mode. And they also have a few other limitations, but the main one that I'm worried about is that direct mode. So I thought, well, how can we add direct mode? So the good thing about these is they're essentially unbrickable. So all of these keyboards, and I'll, t I'll demonstrate this one. This is the Red Dragon K552. It's basically the same um, layout as the K556. It's just 10 keyless, it doesn't have a number pad, and it's slightly cheaper. But this one, I've left the screws out, so I can take it apart. And uh, 
Here you can see what's inside one of these keyboards. They're all very similar inside. And as you can see, there's only one chip that drives the whole keyboard. Um, and this chip is from a company called eVision. Um, and all of these keyboards, the Red Dragons, these over here are from Ajaz. And then others, including the Glorious GMMK, um, Techware, Phantom, and a whole bunch of other low-cost mechanical keyboards, they're all using that same chip, you know, that eVision chip. And that eVision chip, it, it seems what's happening is there's some OEM in China that's making this platform, uh, this eVision company, and they are making both the firmware and the chip, and they're selling it as a complete package. And so companies like Red Dragon, like Ajaz, like Techware, they just buy this platform from eVision, and they build a keyboard around it. So the firmware, the software, and the hardware are all kind of taken care of for them. So what happens is you go out and buy a Red Dragon, and you go out and buy a GMMK, and they're very similar. You plug them in, they do the same thing. Their software looks the same. They have the same RGB effects. That's because they're all based on the same platform. And there are a whole bunch of these, and this, this platform seems very popular among these low-cost keyboards. They almost all use the same um, eVision platform, and they all have that same chip. So a bunch of people... Um, that I didn't really start this project, I kind of hopped in in the middle. So there were some people who are already interested in, let's port a better firmware to that chip. So this little chip in here, this eVision chip, uh, it's, a, it's an ARM processor, so it's a full-on processor, it's a microcontroller. And it's an ARM Cortex-M0, I believe. Uh, so we can put our own code on that, no problem. So we found the tools that you can use to overwrite the firmware that's on that chip. And it's actually really easy. All you have to do is plug in USB and you can write to that chip uh, with a tool that Sonics provides. These are essentially unbrickable because the firmware for the boot process is hard-coded in the chip. If you ever brick it or screw it up and you can't boot it, you can just short out this pin which puts it into boot mode plug it in and use their software to reload the firmware and you're back in business. So these actually turned out to be really nice keyboards to develop on for firmware development. So what we ended up doing is porting the QMK, which is an open source firmware, to these keyboards. So let's take a start by looking at the stock firmware on this keyboard. So I've loaded the original firmware back to this keyboard because I've been developing QMK on it. So right now it is essentially as it was fresh out of the box from Micro Center. So when I go ahead and plug it in, and you can see that it does this spiraling pattern. It starts up here, it loops around the keyboard. This is kind of uh, the signature trademark of these eVision keyboard designs. They all seem to do that. Whenever you plug them in, they do this spiral, and then they light up. And then the Red Dragons use um, the function and this block of keys here to select from all the different modes. Um, this does vary because the Red Dragon or the uh, Ajaz keyboards are a little bit different but they all have that spiral pattern. So if you have an RGB keyboard and when you plug it in, it does this spiral pattern, you have an eVision keyboard. And then if you have an eVision keyboard, you can run our QMK port, but you may have to do a bit of work to reverse engineer the hardware of your keyboard to add it if it's not one that we already have supported. So before we start looking at QMK, I want to show you what is and is not possible using the stock firmware. And I'm going to do this with OpenRGB because I don't have the official software installed for this keyboard right now. And OpenRGB implements most of what it can do. 
So let's just go ahead and open open RGB. So I'm going to open it. And this keyboard is running the stock firmware. And this is using um, the latest master branch of OpenRGB. And um, so I'm going to just bring the keyboard here. And uh, we can go ahead and see here that it's an eVision keyboard. Uh, on older releases of OpenRGB, it did say Red Dragon K556. But because I found out that a lot of these keyboards actually share the exact same USB ID, I went ahead and renamed it to eVision Keyboard. That way it's more generic. And so we can see I haven't done anything yet. So the keyboard is just the blue that it was um, from playing around with it before with the key. So we're just going to go ahead and set green. And the camera here is a little bit delayed. Uh, so you can do that. So you can set the keys to individual colors. So like I can change escape here to red. And I'm going to apply that. So you can see escape is red. But did you notice every time I apply a change, let's just go ahead and do that. And then see how the whole keyboard flickers every time I change something. So let's go ahead and change these to blue. You'll see it flickers a bit. Uh, if I change so let's just say uh, I'll change these. It flickers. So let's see what happens when you try to use uh, an effect engine like Keyboard Visualizer with the stock firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and start the server. Open up Keyboard Visualizer. Um, bring that onto the screen here. And connect. And so, um, by default, devices that don't have a direct mode, so that you can see there's no direct mode in the mode list here. Uh, they are not enabled in Keyboard Visualizer, and this is intentional because uh, only direct mode is actually good for using with effect software like this. Uh, but I have this button here where we can actually override that and turn it on. And so what you can see is it just starts flickering. So it is updating. Uh, you can see the pattern that I'm generating. If I, if I switch the pattern here in Keyboard Visualizer, it does apply to the keyboard. But look how flickery it is. That's really bad. And um, that's not what we want. And besides, uh, if we go, let's just pick something that does a smooth effect. If we make it fast so that you can um, yeah, see how slow that update rate is, that's unusably slow. And it's flickering. And when it's doing this, you can't actually use the keyboard because pressing the keys doesn't work when it's running its update. And I'm going to go ahead and stop that. It's also really bad because it's saving each of those updates to the flash memory in the keyboard. And flash memory has a limited number of read-write cycles, or write cycles, I should say. Uh, you write to it too much, you wear out the flash until you can no longer write to it anymore. It will write corrupt data. And at that point, you've ruined the chip in your keyboard. So that's no good. So we can't use the existing per-key mode that's in this keyboard as a direct mode. It just does not work. It's going to damage the keyboard over time, and it's going to flicker like crazy and you won't be able to use your keyboard as a keyboard. Pretty bad. But you can select from the built-in mode. So like you can use, we'll just go ahead and pick a color here. You can use, this is the color wave. That's one of the built-in modes. Uh, you can also make it a rainbow. And uh, you can adjust the speed. And you can um, pick from some others, like there's a built-in color wheel mode. Let's go ahead and pick a color. And it just kind of spins around. Um, spectrum cycle, it just goes through all the different colors. So the built-in modes, the ones that you can get from the official software, they will work okay in OpenRGB, but you can't do 
effect engines like Keyboard Visualizer or Aurora or Artemis or any of the other software like that would provide game integrations or synchronize all your different RGB. Uh, that will not work with the stock firmware. So as mentioned before, our solution is to port the QMK firmware to this board. Now the eVision chip that we talked about earlier, it's actually a rebranded Sonics SN32F248B. And actually there's multiple chips in use. One is the 248B, the other is the SN32F248, and then there's also the SN32F260. And these three chips are the main chips that we're focusing on with this QMK port. So the Red Dragon keyboards, uh, the K552, the K556, and several others from Red Dragon all use this 248B chip. And actually an older version of the K552 uses just the 248 non-B chip, and that's still a work in progress. But the 248B chip is probably the most supported of the three chips. And so that's the chip that's in the K556 that I'm using. And so that's the chip that we're going to look at right now. So here is the official um, Sonics page for this chip. It's a 32-bit uh, ARM, ARM Cortex-M0 processor. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to Software Tools. We're going to download the Sonics USB MCU ISP tool. This is the uh, USB microcontroller in-system programming tool. So we'll just go ahead and pick the download here. And we're going to open that. And so it is an EXE. Let's just copy that to downloads. And then we'll go in here. Um, so... This is the tool we care about. This is what's going to allow us to flash the firmware in our keyboard. So let's go ahead and open that. Now, what you're going to do, you need to find out the USB ID of your keyboard uh, if you want to flash. But what I, I do not recommend you just go and flash without knowing what you're doing. Uh, always make sure you have a backup of your stock firmware. If you don't have a backup of the stock firmware, you can contact us on Discord. We can help you extract it. It will involve some soldering, some taking your keyboard apart, and you will need an ST-Link tool. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to do. The other thing is you can try to get a firmware update from your keyboard manufacturer. Uh, they will uh, sometimes send out firmware updater tools to update the stock firmware, and you can extract the firmware binary from those updaters. And then you can use that as a recovery in case something goes wrong when you're flashing your keyboard and you get it into an unusable state, you'll have that stock firmware. You can recover your keyboard back to its original state. Uh, this is super important. I've already got a Red Dragon K556 firmware binary that I extracted from an updater that Red Dragon sent me. Uh, that I ask their support for. So make sure you have that backup before you do this. So um, I'm going to show you how to update the keyboard to QMK, but like I said, I do not recommend just going out and doing this without knowing what you're doing and without having that backup. So with that said, let's go ahead and update. So I'm going to do, I have Zadig, which is a uh, USB tool that I like to use. Um, it can install custom drivers. We're not doing that. Uh, we're just using it to list the devices. So um, I have a bunch of devices plugged in. The Red Dragon keyboard is this USB device and it has a few interfaces. So we're just going to go to USB device. I don't know why they didn't give it a proper name, but it's just USB device. And so this is the USB vendor ID or VID, and then this is the USB product ID or PID. You're going to need to know these um, for your keyboard so that you can use this tool. So in this case, uh, OC45 and 5004, that's what we need. It's already got OC45 in here. We want to put 5, 
uh oh four in the PID field. And now we're gonna, we need to download the Sonics QMK, the latest firmware. So I'm going to go to our GitHub page, and then we're going to do QMK firmware, and then we have it set to build automatically as a GitHub action, so you can just download the pre-built firmware. If you want OpenRGB support, you're going to want this uh, OpenRGB branch, so get the latest one that's SN32 OpenRGB. So we're going to go ahead and download this. Uh, just open it and then I'm just going to copy all of these to the downloads folder for now uh, so these are the QMK firmware for all the different keyboards that we currently are supporting and we're adding new keyboards as people are reverse engineering them and adding them to our code and it builds the firmware for all the different keyboards so the one we're interested in is the Red Dragon K556 so let's go ahead and bring that on screen here. Um, yeah. So what's nice about the stock firmware is that you can actually flash over it with this tool. Uh, with the QMK, you can't. You'll have to put it into bootloader mode first before you can flash. But with the stock firmware, you can just flash right over it. So I'm going to go ahead and click load file, and we're going to go to... Um, yeah, SN32F248 or XB. This is the chip that's in the Red Dragon K556. Click OK. And then in downloads here, we're going to pick the K556 default.bin. This is the firmware for this keyboard, uh, the QMK firmware. So we're going to open. And then we're just going to go ahead and click start. And uh, that's going to, as you can see, the lights on the keyboard went off because it's now programming the chip in the keyboard. And whenever this is done, the keyboard reboots and it's running QMK. So there we go. Uh, the flicker is more noticeable on the camera. And QMK is a little bit more flickery than the stock firmware, and that's something we're working on. But yeah, it, it's not as bad as it looks in the camera. So we can go ahead and close this out. And then, uh, so the keyboard is running QMK. If we do, we can go ahead and come over here and type on the keyboard. Let's just do hello world. And so you can see that the keyboard is working as a keyboard. Uh, so let's go ahead and open OpenRGB again. Note that this is the QMK Sonics branch of OpenRGB. Uh, the protocol for QMK hasn't been merged into the master branch of OpenRGB yet. And that's because it's not finalized. The QMK project is still um, thinking through the USB protocol involved. So right now all this work is being kept in a separate branch, but it is working. So now if we scroll through the list, we don't have eVision keyboard anymore. That's what we had before, uh, which was for the stock firmware. Instead, if we scroll down, we have K556. And if you look in here, K556, it's Red Dragon keyboard, and it says QMK RGB matrix device. That means, the keyboard is now running QMK software. And then let's go ahead and, as you can see, the keyboard's still doing its default rainbow effect. That, that's uh, one of the effects in QMK. So we're gonna just set the devices. And as you can see, if I go ahead and change the color, it's no longer flickering like it was in the stock firmware. Um, even if, let's go, bring up the LED view. Let's do what we did before. Let's set escape to red. And see, escape turns red, but there was no flicker. And if I do the same with these, we'll do yellow, 
we'll do blue. You know, if we just apply different colors to different parts of the keyboard, it just applies and there's no flicker. And uh, that's really what we're going for with QMK. And as you can see, uh, right now it's showing direct mode. There are other modes that QMK has, but they're not implemented in this build of OpenRGB yet. Uh, but we do have our direct mode, and that's what we care about. So let's start the server, and then open Visualizer, and bring it down here, and connect. And so as you can see, the keyboard, it's running the animation from Visualizer, and it's not flickering. So if we go, let's just do... Um, a static pattern. It's not flickering like it was. Let's go bring up the color wheel again. I'll put the speed way up. And as you can see, the animation on the keyboard is a lot smoother, a lot closer to what it is on the other devices and on the screen. And most importantly of all, this can go for ages and ages and ages, and we're not going to damage the chip in the keyboard because it's not saving anything to that flash memory. So that is QMK running on the Red Dragon K556. So just for fun, I want to show you all four of my QMK Sonics keyboards running OpenRGB at the same time. So we have the Red Dragon K556 that we already talked about. Uh, this one's using the Sonics 248B chip. Then I have the Red Dragon K552. This is the Rev2 model. Uh, it also uses the 248B chip, but there are older models, the Rev1, I believe, and maybe a Rev0 as well, that I know the Rev1 at least uses the 248 non-B chip, so you'll have to figure out which revision you have if you want to flash QMK to this board. Uh, this one is the Rev2. It's using the same chip as the K556. Uh, both of these, all, all four of these are already loaded with QMK. Then over here we have the AJAZ AK33. And so the story here is that I wanted to buy one of these to help someone in Discord port the code to the 240 chip, the non-B chip. And he had one of these, and it had that chip. So I was like, well, I'll just go buy one of these. They're reasonably cheap. I can help him support that code, or I can help get the LEDs working on that chip. Uh, so I went on Amazon, and I bought one, and I got this one. And uh, it turns out it's a newer version of the keyboard, and it uses the 248B chip, same as the Red Dragons. So uh, I like the keyboard. It works well. I got QMK ported to it but it had the wrong chip for what I wanted to do. So then I went on eBay and I found someone selling a used one, a uh, used AJAZ AK33 with the uh, RGB lights. And he had a picture of it and we confirmed that the model number was the same one that the other guy on Discord had. And so I knew that this one should have the 240 non-B chip. So uh, I got that one. I just got this one yesterday, and I spent some time getting the lights working on it. So now all of these keyboards are working with QMK. And they all have QMK loaded, and they all have the OpenRGB version of QMK. So let's go ahead and open OpenRGB. So I would go ahead and open that. And then we can see it populating all the different devices. Uh, the QMK, it has to request the entire LED matrix layout from the keyboard. Um, so it does take a little while to scan. Uh, so we have the two AK-33s, and they're just slightly different layout um, just due to the way the LEDs are wired between the two versions. And then we have the Red Dragon K552 and the K556. So let's go ahead and set them to red. So I'm just going to make this small again. 
uh, we'll just set red. And so all the keyboards have changed. And then I'm going to go ahead and start the server and open visualizer, connect. And so all the keyboards are now synchronized. They're running the same pattern. Uh, we can go ahead and switch to the color wheel. And they will work with the audio visualizer as well. Let's just uh, go ahead and pick the headset microphone. Um, I'm talking into it. Uh, yeah, here we go. Let's turn up the amplitude. So if, I, if I'm talking, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three, uh, the camera is a few seconds behind because I'm streaming from my phone to OBS. Um, so that's why the view is lagging a bit. But you can see the visualizer is responding smoothly with a high update rate on all four keyboards. And so no flicker, no, no problems. It actually looks pretty good. So... Um, I'm going to go ahead and close Visualizer, and then I'm going to open Aurora. So here's Aurora. I've opened it up, and it's automatically connected to OpenRGB, as you can see here. Let's shrink it so it fits on the screen. Um, so yeah. I've got this fire effect going right now. Um, we can go ahead and change that. I, I also like this matrix effect. It's pretty cool. Um, so Aurora has a whole bunch of different effects you can choose from. Uh, it has its own audio visualizer. It has amber light, which reacts to the colors on your screen, which is good for sometimes watching movies and TV. Uh, it has breathing, it has rainbows, it has this particle effect that's really cool. Uh, but one thing it can also do is integrate with your games. And one thing it can do is pull colors from the Razer Chroma integrations that some games have. So the game that I like to use for this is Overwatch. It's a game I play a lot and it has Razer Chroma integration. So I have that turned on in Aurora here, let's see, Overwatch, right here. It has chroma lighting, and um, I, I have this post-process turned on to make it a little brighter. Um, so what happens is if I open Overwatch, then Aurora will capture the lighting effects from Overwatch, and then it will send them through OpenRGB, and they'll work on these uh, QMK keyboards. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to open Overwatch here. And then I'm going to just go into the training practice range so we can experiment with the lighting effects. So as you can see, the lights have turned on orange and now they've just gone to uh, Doom Fist color, which is uh, red. Uh, we can do, like, every time you switch through your heroes, um, you, it does this little wave pattern. And then if we pick Lucio, he has this cool pattern, this wave. Uh, as he's doing his speed, it's green. And then if you change to his heel, uh, it goes the other direction, it's yellow. Um, and then you can see that the H is lit up. That's, uh, for the hero select. Mercy has a cool one where, uh, if you use, um, her healing, it does this. If you use her damage boost, it does that. So different colors. And then it also does effects for ultimates. So if I charge up my ultimate here.
you can see that it did this um, pattern, this blue wave. And then when you use your ultimate, it does the same thing. So those are some effects that Overwatch has that integrate pretty well with Aurora and then OpenRGB. And then if you exit the game, it just goes back to whatever effects you already had in Aurora. So that's basically just a short demo of what Aurora can do with OpenRGB. The last thing I want to talk about before ending this video is how to revert your keyboard from QMK back to the stock firmware. So if you follow this video and you installed QMK and you decide you don't like it, you want to go back to the stock firmware, uh, if you have that backup that I asked you to get before flashing QMK, you can easily go back to the stock firmware. So I'm going to show this on the K556 here. So if you have QMK installed, all you have to do is hold down function and then press escape. And that puts the keyboard into bootloader mode. And so in bootloader mode, the keyboard is able to be flashed again with the uh, Sonic's flashing tool. So let's go to Zadig again, and let's look for the bootloader. So if you have the chip in bootloader mode, it shows up as USB input device. And if you have the 248B chip, it is 0C457040. So we want to put 7040 in the PID field here. And now, Actually, let's move this over so you can see it. Uh, we can close that out. And then we're going to load file, and we're going to do the same thing we did earlier. Uh, this is a B chip, a SN32F248B. OK. And now I've already got the original firmware. I pulled this out of the updater that they sent me. I'm not covering that process in this video. Uh, it's documented on GitHub and on Discord. Uh, if you're interested, join our Discord and we can help you extract the stock firmware from an updater or pull it from your keyboard's chip using the development tools, which of course will require some soldering. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and select this and then just go ahead and click Start. And now you can see the keyboard, it's back to doing its original spiral pattern and it's running the stock firmware again, just as it was out of the box. We can do all the same key patterns from before. So that's how you can use our Sonics QMK port on your Red Dragon or other eVision based keyboard and then recover it back if you decide you don't like it. And that's really all I have to say about the Sonics QMK port today. So I'm just going to wrap up this video by saying, one, if you want to try it out, make sure you get your firmware backed up first. Get a backup copy. That's super important because there are still some bugs with the QMK firmware. It's gotten a lot better since the last update, but we still have the occasional issue where the keyboard will stop responding for a bit and it might like spam a letter and then recover a few seconds afterwards. But it can be a little annoying sometimes and it seems to be worse on some keyboards than others. So I still recommend that you have that backup so that you can go back to the stock firmware, especially if this is your primary keyboard. But overall, the port is making great progress, and it's a lot better. It's, it's basically daily driver usable. I've been typing, programming, gaming on this keyboard, actually several of these keyboards, over the past few weeks. 
and with QMK, and I've been pretty happy with them. So that's really all I have to say today. So thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next video.